Bitcoin's closed up for the sixth straight week. We're seeing higher highs, higher lows, higher closes for six straight weeks. I think at this point, it's probably a good idea to prepare for any sort of outcome here, as many of you might already know that these trends can't go on forever. So I want to look at the worst case scenario in this video as just 12 months ago, we did the same thing, looking at a worst case scenario for Bitcoin. Now that was 24 hours from the exact low of the market. And in this video, which you can go back and have a look in your own time, we we're looking at the possibility that this was going to be the bottom for Bitcoin, looking at this zone of BTC being the low and getting prepared and actioning, executing our plans to get to the upside. So hit the like and subscribe button. Let's have a look at the possibilities for worst case scenarios for Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and Ethereum in this video, looking at key price targets. And of course, understanding the timing of how these things can play out. Link in the top of the video description gets you access to our Cyber Monday sale, Black Friday is over. But if you also wanna just join the free crypto and economic report, that's the link to do it on. Get on the email list right now. Okay, let's start it off with Bitcoin. Six straight weeks up, we've broken out of a key resistance level. We've put in support at a key support level, so 25 to 32K. I'm going to reference these areas quite a lot because essentially for the worst case scenario, this is going to be the zone that the bulls do not want to see the market come back under and hold in this level. For the bears, the worst case scenarios are going to be something entirely different because if you're bearish, you want this market to go down. You don't want it to go up. So I've got that to cover. But what we looked at uh, 12 months ago was the bottoming of the market. There's four year signals here where there's going to be a massive shift to the upside. There was uh, markets looking to bottom and we heard all sorts of things about Bitcoin supposedly hitting 10K 9k 12k whatever it was it never happened some might think it's still going to happen i'll leave it up to them we don't need to uh, keep driving salt into the wounds of those particular bears but what about a worst case scenario from the current price point of roughly 37 38 thousand dollars so let's have a look at the overall cycle so this helped us understand the bottoming of the market end of 2022 we need to understand the overall picture here for the traditional markets, the stock markets, and of course, the real estate markets as well, because that is where the majority of the money is. You've probably heard me say this many times before, but if we can get a perspective on that, then it helps us for our uh, investing through Bitcoin and cryptos, because essentially no one is going to pump these markets up, Bitcoin and crypto that is, if there isn't a risk on environment in traditional finance. That's what got us through the worst times in the market a year ago, the worst times that we can remember since COVID because we had that drop on the S&P 500 of 25, 30%, same sort of deal for the NASDAQ. So everything was down. That's why we're looking at the low coming in. Get it, get ready, get into it. We don't know the exact day or the exact price, but it's that area of the low. So that's basically the look at the macro cycle here, the financial system here. We're looking at further price increases over the coming years, as crazy as it sounds, I know that. Uh, everyone's got different views on the economy and interest rate rises and uh, wars going on around the world and affordability and energy problems and energy costs going up and rents going up, you name it. I could list every single thing here. There will be some sort of problem and reason as to why these markets can't go up. But I just wanna drill it home as hard as possible that the markets have gone up in the face of all of that. All that is called is a wall of worry. The mass media will not tell you that. The majority of people won't tell you that or they don't understand it because fear sells better than actually trading on the right side of the market. That's our macro cycle. We've gone through our mid cycle. We are now coming up to the end of the cycle, coming up for a nice big peak here. As we pointed out, probably sometime after 2026 for the stock markets, maybe for real estate sometime around 2026. For the S&P 500, this is where we put out the last video, which was why it was so reasonable to expect, in my own opinion, a low was coming into the Bitcoin market. We had the, uh, the low here for the S&P 500. Don't think this price will be broken. Uh, last video we had was tweet predictions about the markets going up from that point at the end of 2022. And this video here came right in the middle there looking at uh, the cycle low for Bitcoin and basically just worst case scenarios from that point. 
Now for the S&P 500, since those videos and since the low, well, that's enough said. Prices are up. The cycle is well and truly in progress here. And we're seeing pretty significant moves to the upside for the S&P 500. So there's still a risk on environment here. But if you don't think the market cycle low is in, I urge you to go through and revisit many of the previous videos and look at how the market has unfolded in the face of all the negativity, in the face of all of the analysts calling for bigger downside targets. Let's carry on. Bitcoin is now a little way away from the 50% level, about 11 to 12%. The 50% levels, hugely important. If you are new to the channel, the 50% levels are our key magnets. Essentially, if we are trading underneath the 50%, it's in a weak position. If we're trading over the 50%, the market is in a strong position. Nice and simple there. We are running up to the 50% and it looks like if we get a test there, then maybe we will have to look for some sort of downside or at least a correction, some sort of rejection. It is an important level. Even a pause at that level is enough. So that's what we're, we are looking for to see what happens at that point, to see how the market responds. Is it going to just pause at the 50%? Is it going to blow through the 50%? Is it going to correct quickly? There's your up, down, sideways, but we need to be prepared for everything here. The preparation on how the market responds to that level is what decisions we would make after that point. What happens from there? Well, if we get a correction similar to what we've seen in this move up from the low, so this is the low here, and that's basically the last video that was done on the worst case scenario, we've seen a 21.6% correction in April to June, we've seen a 20% correction. The banking crisis saw a 22.3% correction. And I'm not going to factor this one in too much, but essentially this is the FTX collapse and that one's roughly a 28% correction. So somewhere around 20 to 22%. If we get to this 50% level, then we just uh, draw back around that 22%. So there's 22% takes us to around 32,000. So as I said in the intro, looking at the worst case scenarios for the bull case here, Think if we got a rejection at 50% and did something similar to what happened before, that's kind of a balancing point to the market, a 22% correction from there. Does it have to happen? Of course not. None of these things have to happen and I honestly do not know what exactly is gonna happen, but I prepare for each scenario in the market so that I can then know what do I do if this occurs. It's just like going to battle, going to war. You don't know what the opponent or the enemy is going to do at this point, but you have to prepare for all options. If we go into battle thinking we know exactly what the enemy is gonna do and and this market always has to go up, we're going to get screwed. Same deal for the downside. The bears, they always think the market is going to go down and they think it's always going to come back and give them another entry, re uh, entry opportunity at 20K. They think it's going to happen at 15K, 14K, 12K, whatever they said, and it doesn't happen. They don't have any sort of preparation. So as a trader, you need to be very, very well prepared in case those scenarios don't happen. Now, what if we only see half that? Half that's going to take us back to where we currently are, at roughly 37%. What if we see a move back to the previous lows and gets us back into this zone here, which was basically a reaccumulation before the breakout? Well, the underside, the lower side of that is roughly 40%. So the market could correct to that point and still be above those lows. Maybe it tests them and breaks it a little bit and comes back above, but essentially we're looking for more macro closing basis here on weeklies and monthly charts, not just a quick wick down and back up. So even 40% from that level. Now you might be wondering, well, what if this is the top? Well, back to the previous highs, roughly 16, 15%, back to this point that the market got rejected at in July. So basically 16%. Now, if we took it into the 30,000, 30 and a half thousand, where there was a lot of rejection there on closing prices, then that takes you back to about 20% as well. So you can still sit in a, a reasonable correction here for the bulls and still be above the previous resistance level. So that could become support. So that is almost like a best case, worst case scenario for the bulls. Essentially getting rejected right now, no more upside, and we get a move back down to previous resistance levels, which might become support. You might've heard that before, old resistance, you get the flip, which then becomes support. Or from the underside of a market, if it's collapsing, you'll get old support become resistance and then the market collapsed from that point. 
but it looks like we're in a bull trend as I just went through earlier in the video, looking at the macro cycle here for uh, the traditional markets, the stock markets, the real estate market, and of course, just showing you again uh, the S&P, how we, were, how we were looking at this low being a transitional phase and an accumulation phase for the overall cycle, which gave us the confidence to have a look at Bitcoin as a potential bottom as well in the market and basically get in as close as we can to the low and just wait, be patient for the next move in the cycle. Worst case scenario would then flip into the bearish zone then. So if we got a break under these levels, that would be the worst case scenario for Bitcoin bulls. I've picked this specific line here. Market goes underneath that. Round number $25,000. Some will call it the low here at uh, 24.8, or 24.9 for around number 25,000. If the market goes under 25,000 and closes under there, show I think is over for the bulls for any sort of significant upside targets here. That is going to be one of the worst case scenarios because then that would then lead us back to go and test 20K, maybe even the 18 and 15K region. But I think we're a long way from that now and I'm not sure if we will actually ever get there. So to bring it up for a worst case scenario, closing under 25,000. So we had the best of the worst and the worst of the worst, which would lead to a lot a lot worse things, a lot, a lot lower prices. The best case, of course, we come up to 50%, uh, hold it, do its own thing, and then start to break out from there. Whether that thing is accumulate sideways, come back and retest some uh, high 30s, mid 30s levels, or basically just break straight through, go towards the 48K, and then hold out above that line. So there are a lot of good case scenarios there for Bitcoin bulls. Now, if that happened, that would be an absolute worst case scenario for the bears. The bears are in a lot of pain right now and a lot of trouble if they have not entered the market here or here or in this zone either. This is a lot of pain because we are a long, long, long way from the Bitcoin bottom, a long way from home, up around 140%. So I do know that we do have still still have some bears out there that say that this is all part of a manipulated rally and the world is going to come to an end. We're going to have more wars and there's going to be some black swan events and they're really making up a whole lot of stories which don't really have any basis except for fear porn in the minds of whoever that are really not watching a chart. I don't have any good words to say for that, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Just follow the charts and they will show you what is actually happening, what is where the money is actually going. We've covered some corrections here. I don't think the worst, worst case is going to happen. But in terms of the market then going up, in terms of the best case for the bulls, that then becomes the absolute worst case for the bears. If this market explodes past these levels, comes and tests the previous monthly lower swing top, which was basically the uh, complacency bounce, that is going to crush a lot of bears. We get the rise up between the 60 and the $70,000 region to come back for a double top. You guessed it, it's going to be the worst pain any bear could anticipate. From that point, we could potentially look at a pullback to the zone of the mid 40s to uh, low 50s. That would give you that sort of cup and handle type scenario. Remember, this is 12 months down. We're currently at 12 months up. So if it happened within the next month or two, it's still going to look like a pretty good pattern to play out here and then get any sort of correction from that point. What happens from that point? Well, we got a lot of ifs, thens and buts, so I don't want to go too far down into that point until we see what happens at this 50%. But for the sake of enjoyment here, if we do get the correction at that point and a pullback, it's going to crush both. It's going to crush the bears, going to crush the bulls. Essentially, that's what the market likes to do. It loves to crush both sides of the market. It, it does not like extreme fear or extreme greed for too long. Now, it's also a double-edged sword for the bulls. If this rises far too quick, maybe over the next few weeks to a couple of months, and we do get a breakout of these key resistance levels and a test of the all-time high, anything that is abnormal, too hard, too fast, the market doesn't like, and that can result in pretty severe corrections. Remember we saw this back in 2019, very fast move to the upside. This correction took a long, long time. We had the black swan and then we had to reaccumulate again before we came good for that mania stage of the bull market. This is still the bull market. This is just the mania stage, the end stage, the stage that people call a bull market, which 
is part of the bull market, but it's the end stage of the bull market because of the emotion. Now I've got the emotions of the market to get through, basically the Wall Street cheat sheet and how we move forward from this point. But I can do a whole video on this alone. So I'm gonna save that for another time and get onto the worst case, best case scenarios of the total cryptocurrency market cap. Now this one isn't as straightforward as Bitcoin, but not as bad as the total three market cap. So that's with all the altcoins excluding uh, Bitcoin, ETH and the stables. But nonetheless, we've also had a pretty significant breakout of these highs here for the total cryptocurrency market cap. So any worst case scenario would put this market cap back under the previous highs, which were at 1.26 trillion and also 1.24 trillion. So basically anything under that 1.26 trillion would be a worst case scenario move for the total cryptocurrency market cap because it basically throws the market back into the reaccumulation zone. That's not what you wanna see if you have a confirmed breakout. And if this is the confirmed breakout, it needs to remain above this level. Uh, it, can, it can get rejected anywhere at these previous uh, support levels, roughly 1.5, $1.51 trillion, but you don't wanna see it close back underneath those previous highs of 1.25 or at worst where those closing prices were here at 1.15, $1.16 trillion. So that's would be that would be the worst case scenario for the total cryptocurrency market cap if it were to come back under and close underneath those levels after breaking out. That's the key point here. The bears, they need to see it come back under there, break underneath those previous levels. But for the bulls, that is going to be the worst case scenario if we get a break under that level. A rejection soon, because we can see there is some resistance coming up. A rejection soon, not a bad thing at all. We do need some time to reaccumulate. But the worst case for the bears then would be a breakout, a very swift breakout of that previous support level and closes above that level. And that level is uh, $1.5 trillion, basically where these lows were last time, 1.49, call it 1.5 trillion. You see that happen. I think the bears have got a lot of problems on their hands and the bulls, they're basically sitting in that stronger area. For the 50% level now, you can see the 50% is at 1.86, call it 1.9 for a round number and then the monthly lower swing top at 2.17. They're the key levels to break above for the bulls, I would say, after the halving. I think we've got some uh, levels to test here, and then again at the 50% level before the halving, potentially, and then we start to work our way higher before the market kicks on again for the mania stage of the bull market. This is your accumulation stage, this is the breakout, this is the next reaccumulation before you get into that final man manic mania stage. How long do we have? Well, we're 12 months in, and the end of that 12 month period is roughly the same time next year, roughly October, November, December, quarter four of 2024. You can see it's happened one, two, three. There are your three years up for the total cryptocurrency market cap, a nice significant low at the end of 12 months. Similar to what happened here, we had that low a couple of months ago, and then we had the reaccumulation in this phase as the market's heading up, and then the breakout manic stage. Manic stage, reaccumulation, and two other accumulate, well basically accumulation and reaccumulation here. So you can see these markets really start to uh, balance out along this journey up to those next resistance levels. Worst case scenario for the bulls, closing under 1.25. Uh, best case scenario for the bears is the same thing, a closing under 1.25 trillion. We also had to cover ETH in the intro. So I'll do a quick one here, but I'll go into more detail in future videos because this one's far, far, far long enough. Worst case scenario is ETH closing back under roughly this white line here where you can see there was some resistance, but now we've flipped above. So uh, roughly under $1,900 and then these previous highs that you can see right here at about $1,700. You can see there was a fair bit of movement uh, in the previous breakouts, reaccumulations and breakdowns. So between this 1700 and 1900, if ETH starts to close under that level, which also coincides with a 50% level at 1830, stuff under here is not going to be good for ETH. But right now we're sitting in the stronger half of this smaller 50%. 
looking like it's getting ready to break out of these highs. So probably on the next move of Bitcoin might get that breakout of 2100, 2150, which is going to be a worst case scenario for anyone bearish thinking that ETH is going to break back under $1,500. I've made plenty of other predictions and plenty of calls and lots of talking in this video. I'll give you one last one here. I don't think ETH is going to come back under 1500. If it is, it's going to be crushed for some time. It has put in a higher low before Bitcoin and it fared reasonably well on the extreme fear of FTX. That's your November bar down here. So it looks like it is preparing to be stronger than Bitcoin and eventually will uh, take on a lot more of those gains as we get further into this bull market cycle. So worst case scenario, once again, a break under the 50% level here at around 1800 bucks. That's why I gave you a range of 17 to 19. That's going to be a worst case for the bulls, more um, uh, distribution probably, and then a move back down to test the 1500. To the upside for the bears, a break out of that 2150 and more closes above this level, starts to close into this zone here. And look at the major 50% level is at 2900. So anything uh, above that level and then a consolidation above 37. So between 29 and 3700, it's probably, probably shows off for the bears and you're going to get a nice uh, consolidation for an attempt at that all time high. That's a huge look at the worst case scenarios for Bitcoin as we lead into a little bit of a potential <laughs> rejection area here. And you can see the same sort of thing happening for the total cryptocurrency market cap and also for uh, Ethereum as well. Does that mean we will get rejected today? Of course not. There's no guarantees here, but you can see that we've got some room to move to the upside before the or worst case scenarios can play out from there. Talked about why I think 70K, a fast move to 70K is going to be pretty bad for both parties here, for both the bears and the bulls. I've got plenty more to cover in terms of the Wall Street cheat sheet and lots more going through many of the cryptos and of course the stock markets as well. Like and subscribe. You guys know the deal. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, take care and peace out.